Good afternoon, everyone. This is kind of like a family reunion. It's been so nice to come a little bit early and watch you all just love on each other. Don't you love your family? Yeah. Times like these make us realize how important our family is to us. And um, I'm just so grateful to see so many of you here. We need to bring some extra chairs in to accommodate the crowd. And uh, thank you, thank you for being a part of today. And I want to do the best I can. I feel like I'm uh, holding a family heirloom when I speak of your mom because I realize how precious, how valuable she was to you. I'm so glad I got to watch the pictures at the beginning of the service just to see, just see her in action loving on you. Second, I want to just thank you so much for being a part of today. I, I'm so grateful you're here. I had a chance to meet some of you. It's interesting. The eleven, or the nine children have introduced me, introduced themselves to me with their number. I'm number seven. <laughs> I'm number eleven. I'm Tom. That's the one I do remember. <laughs> and number seven, her favorite. I understand. So. <laughs> Thank you for this bright, shining light in their life. Father, we welcome your presence in this room, that you would fill every corner, every aisle, every heart with your presence, that you would comfort them and bless them, that this would be a real celebration of a lovely mom, a lovely grandma, great grandma, great great grandma. And we welcome you here. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, folks. A life tribute to Mary Elizabeth Mayer Hoffman Bell, or Mom. Our mother, Mary Elizabeth Mayer Hoffman Bell, was born June 2nd, 1924, in Dimock, South Dakota, to Lawrence and Blanche Mayer. Mom was the third of seven children. Her brothers and sisters include Paul, Josephine, Ruth, Helen, Thomas, and Catherine. Our grandparents and the five oldest children moved to Indiana in 1929. And then in 1945, mom met and married Willis Joseph Hoffman and made their first home here in Seattle, Washington. Quickly, their family began to grow beginning with Jeannie in 1946. And here's the list. Followed by Jim, Kathy, Barbara, Paul, Marion, Margaret, Joe, Mark, Frank, and Tom. Yes, 11 in all. She was a very busy mom for many years. In, 19, in 1977, she met and married our stepfather, Joseph Bell, and they lived in Seattle. Although they traveled over the United States in their mobile home for many years following their retirement. She is preceded in death by Jeannie in 2006 and Jim in 2019. No doubt some of the hardest times a family ever goes through. Mom passed on April 6, 2023, just a, several, just a few weeks shy of her 99th birthday. What joys, adventures, observations, trials, and tribulations she experienced throughout her life. God bless mom by letting her watch each and every of her children grow and live spirit-filled, productive lives. Best of all, mom got to see grand and great and great, great grandbabies all growing into strong individuals to carry on the love of God, family, and friends. Don't be surprised if in the year 2030, we will need our own stadium for our family gatherings. That's for certain. How do we explain how much we love mom and how much she loved each of us individually? How do you capture lightning, water transitioning from water to steam to ice and back to water? Well, that's the best explanation of mom and her ability to adapt to each of her children, maintain a household, deal with social challenges by keeping her eyes and her heart on God. 
Mom's earliest years were loved and sheltered in the family farmhouse in South Dakota with no electricity and mom was born at home. On the fireplace mantle of her home are two oil lamps from that original farmhouse. Many years later, mom reflected that she came a long way now having, having a vacuum that was a robot. A person's name is very important, especially in the development of the United States as a whole, and equally so within each community. In South Dakota, family's, names, family's name was pronounced Mazer. If I said that right, Mazier? Meyer. Meyer, thank you. Meyer. When the family moved to Indiana, the nuns said they had to pronounce it Mayer. The church had the last say in the matter, and it was Mayer from then on. Open your hearts and let the vitality of our mom's spirit surge through each of us as we remember her ability to laugh, to speak sternly, teach, tease, while teaching us to survive. Often Bell, two, born in 1924. Yeah, sure. Did. She goes, how much did you put in? 
two tablespoons? He goes, oh my gosh, that's, that's a dollar a box. Put in three boxes and do it again. <laughs> uh, what do you have them, what do you have denim on it? You know, what do you put on it? Oh, what a nice big shirt. What color is it? I said bright red. She goes, oh my god. No, you can't do red. You gotta do white. Red will just, you know, have really affect the chicken pox. So, did that, Zach got a good night's sleep. And for a few weeks after that, he'd be at home. It's like, Zach, it's time to get ready for bed. What does Grandma Bell say? <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> I used that to my, to my advantage for a few years. <laughs> uh, Mom getting old, she made it look easy. One of my siblings said that. I said, you know what, that's so true. She made it look easy. Uh, it's a momism that I, I always used in hope yeah. yeah. Sisters were sitting around talking about how old they are, how many kids they have, how old was mom at that age, how many kids she had at this age. And mom walked by and goes, girls make too much of this age thing. I just tell them I'm 10 years older than I really am. And they say, Mary, you look great for 72. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great moment. <laughs> uh, she loved baseball, but she also loved the Cubs. I didn't know that until they won. She was so excited. <laughs> she used to take the train up to the Cubs games. But she loved the Cubs. So the mirror too. A couple other things I remember is uh, we lived in a small house. Being teenagers, you know, you get home a little late and you try to sneak in. And uh, you try to eat really and you're, you're out there with the door head for 20 minutes making sure that it doesn't make any noise. And you sneak through and you kind of know where all the floorboards can squeak and you try and get through. Every time she go, Frank, is that you? <laughs> How did she know? Years later, I found out when she landed in bed, she had a mirror right there. <laughs> and that mirror reflected off that mirror. And that mirror we, we used to uh, bring friends home to sneak upstairs. Always got caught. So now. So we had the friends climb up on the roof, on the deck. I didn't realize why. Years later, Mom said, well, you know, you had the light on the room. Their shadow showed on the side wall, the next house. <laughs> she knew every time. Every time. Smarter than, smarter than we were. Hi, I'm Daniel. Remember me. Don't I have to say goodbye? Remember me. Don't let it make you cry. Don't let me know you're fine the way. Remember me. Don't I have to say goodbye? Remember me. Don't let it make you cry. Don't let it wait now. You'll find a way. You're all in my heart. I swear I sacred song to you.
glistening eye and a quivered chin, a family name shared and accepted again. As handed down from generations, this growing family in a new era carries on a family name familiar from yesteryear. A proud father turns to catch the thoughtful eye of Grandpa Hoffman standing quietly by. A thankful nod, a pat on the back, offered to a grandfather standing and holding his hand. I talk, I think. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, rest now, no other rest. This sacred time will end and life's demands will call. Be still, dear mother, be still. Sleep, for your time is soon to be up and about while hungry, energetic children climb and pout. Who would say that angels did not cluster and guard her as to ease her day? For she had provided another sphere of life that they too may find their way. Now, those once held so close. The Father waits. <clears throat> the Father waits to welcome home with open arms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know me as Barbara Fitty. Yes. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna um, say two things, but two events, I guess. Not necessarily in order. Did what you do? That was me. Oh, the sister was getting married, and Mary's mom offered to do my hair. <laughs> so what else could you do but use a whole bottle of Dickney do and plastic curlers? And I was so excited. So I went home, got up the next morning, because my grandma always punished me for my roller store. I could not get the rollers. <laughs> so I was devastated. I was screaming bloody murder. My hair, my hair was really long then, right down to here, kind of, sort of. Anyway, so we struggled through it. My hair lasted like a month. <laughs> so anyway. And then the other story, last story is, um, we we're all at the house, four boys, some girls, and your mom came home and she says, I want everybody, it's not a Hoffman, to go home. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, yeah, get out, get out. And she said, that means you too, Barbara. And I was, Devastated. <laughs> and I cried all the way home. I thought all this time I was a Hoffman, <laughs> but apparently not. Anyway, I'm thankful that I've met all of you, known all of you all these years, and God bless. All right. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, September 11, 1985, I had a, was involved in a motorcycle accident, and uh, mom was the first one to step up. And uh, just shut everything down, paid off the bills, get them in the house, let's get it done. And uh, like Frank was saying, the uh, backgammon came into play. Uh, after that, I was suffered a bit of insomnia, and uh, mom was there. Every minute, losing every single game. <laughs> <laughs> Devised a way of scoring that only she and I knew about, and uh, she was an utter failure. Uh, <laughs> but she was up with me for weeks. A couple of uh, elbows off the table. Frightening words. <laughs> uh, who was in the kitchen? Which always came back with me. <laughs> and then, who, who's me? <laughs> uh, one other story from the uh, motorcycle accident. I was laid up in the bedroom, and uh, her and JB got me all bandaged up for the night, decided they would go out and get a movie. <laughs> 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 it 
if you knew JB and Mama, they kind of like Westerns. Um, all I remember hearing was, you know, like popcorn was all done, they're all, you could hear them settling down, they're getting their chairs, turn on the TV. Uh, this was in the days of, you know, a video store up the street. And uh, I don't know if they went to the wrong video store. <laughs> <laughs> Just the wrong section. <laughs> All I heard was, oh, I hear JV start to laugh. And, oh, no. Oh, oh my God. God. over who got to take the movie back. Neither <laughs> <laughs> one of them wanted to see the look on the girl's face. Oh, <laughs> 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 suffering trying to figure out how to rewind this damn thing. <laughs> Just to 
hear all the all the stories of uh, all of you guys growing up, and and I I think it it's shaped my life. I know that, just like Christine said, my part of my identity is this family. You know, I mean, when somebody gets to know you, I mean, I'm like, yeah, I'm one of you know almost a hundred cousins. <laughs> You know, and, and it, it does, it, it's part, it's part of me, and forever I'm starting that, and it will stay with us forever, and I just, I'll always, uh, always miss her. Uncle Mark. I miss you, Danny. I love you. Yes, I love you too. You're a good man. I liked your song. You sound fantastic. Yeah.